The BBC organised an election debate, the British public slammed the BBC for being pro-Remain and biased, and we fact-checked the fact-checkers. Now, you remember a few days ago we had the ITV uh, hosting the first leaders debate between Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson. Uh, we talked about this in the previous video. Uh, the format was absolutely terrible. Uh, the audience kept clapping for no reason every two seconds. And uh, Boris Johnson hardly had any time to talk. To be fair, neither leader had any uh, time to talk, whether it was Corbyn or uh, Boris. But Boris Johnson specifically kept being interrupted by uh, the host, but also the audience. Uh, but now the BBC, last night, BBC Question Time hosted a, a Question Time special between four party leaders, Jeremy Corbyn, Boris Johnson, Joe Stinson, and for some reason, Nicola Sturgeon. God knows why, but that's why. Uh, obviously, yes, they have, uh, they're one of the largest parties in Parliament, but they don't really count as a national party overall because they only stand in Scotland. But somehow they get a voice. Now, the the format this time was that each leader had to come up on the stage um, individually to make a speech and then answer the questions. And so you would think that the audience would be balanced between remain and leave, between left wing and right wing. But again, the BBC, we've mentioned this uh, many times, that uh, when we talk about the BBC or organisations like the BBC being biased, we're not necessarily just talking about the presenters. I have had personal experience with the BBC with certain producers and people who work, the staff members who work in the, in the back rooms, uh, and they are the biggest problem actually. Not everybody, obviously, but there are some. And I was actually on the Leading Ed channel on uh, YouTube, uh, and uh, we talked about this. There's a, a full version of it coming out soon, but let's uh, have a look at this clip. During the 2016 referendum debate, uh, there, there was a debate organized by the BBC, and I went to the broadcasting house, and uh, I overheard a conversation of the staffers and the producers who were literally having, I mean, obviously I don't, I didn't record it, I have the evidence, but they were having a conversation about, okay, so this is how we formed the questions for the Remainers and the Brexiteers. I'm like, well, you guys are supposed to be impartial. And uh, so the problem with the BBC or these organizations are uh, not necessarily the presenters themselves, it's the people in the background. They're the ones that are shifting the actual agenda and that's the problem. Now the full version of that interview is coming out soon, so I'll let you guys know. Now going back to the the BBC and their impartiality. Uh, so what happened was you had uh, Jeremy Corbyn uh, answering questions first, then you had Nicola Sturgeon and Joe Swinson and then Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. Uh, this is the uh, reaction we had on Twitter from uh, the British public because it was almost unwatchable when you were watching uh, Boris Johnson's uh, segment. We had a lot of tweets that said but I think that this audience is heavily biased towards Labour. If you look at the members cheering and clapping Corbyn, it is more than half. I dread to think what Boris will face in a few minutes time. Yet again, BBC bias in audience selection. Another tweet by David said, uh, Are there any Conservative voters in the audience in Sheffield? BBC bias again. Another one from Lorenzo said, A very Labour friendly audience with sprinkle of SNP supporters. The BBC bias strikes again. Just terrible. And Linda said, Oddly, from whatever part of the UK any of the BBC Question Time programmes come, the audience is always predominantly pro-Labour and anti-Brexit and never reflect prevailing divided opinions. And we had Richard saying, It is clear and obvious that this audience, including Fiona Bruce, the host, are favouring Labour. Typical BBC showing its bias all over again. Disgusting. Yep, that's how it is. Uh, firstly, we're not going to actually show many of the clips of the that show on this episode because it's uh, quite frustrating and unwatchable. So we don't want to bore you guys with that. If you want to, uh, if you haven't seen it, then you want you want to watch it. Go on BBC iPlayer and watch the whole thing. Uh, but make sure that you don't have any um, hangover or anything or a headache because that's not going to help you. Uh, but there is one clip that we want to show you because the audience were supposed to be uh, okay. We're not going to judge, but basically there was one audience member. Uh, who asked a question from Joe Swinson, a very, very uh, scripted and pro-Labour, pro-Corbyn question. Uh, let's watch the, the actual question and then see what happens. You talk about the Lib Dems as a viable alternative to uh, Labour or the Tories. I'd just like to ask you, with 14 million UK citizens now living in poverty, do you regret consistently voting with the Conservatives in favour of harsh and uncaring benefit cuts. And how does that put you as any kind of alternative to the Conservative Party? Uh, 
I mean, I absolutely recognise. Yes. Now, the person who asked this question, the moment that was、uh, shown on TV, Twitter exploded, because apparently this person,、uh, this audience member, is actually Kate Rutter, who is an actress who recently was a, a couple of years ago in a, an anti. Uh, Tory and、uh, a very biased anti-Tory film.、Uh, she was an actress on that, and、uh, we don't know exactly. I'm not going to make any accusations. If she was paid to be there, if she,、uh, it was organised for her to be there, but the question itself was very specific and scripted. It was very targeted. So, if she was there as a you know a civilian. The question itself and the way, obviously, she's good at acting. So it was very passionate. So that was interesting to kind of see if the BBC did any vetting, because a lot of times the BBC actually say that they want to, they always、uh, try to avoid getting people who are not civilians, celebrities, or、uh, other other people in politics. When it comes to the audience, they always try to get civilians. But this time, well, she wasn't technically. She's a celebrity. I mean, not a good one, but she's still a celebrity.、Uh, but in terms of What happened during each segment? You had obviously in- individual leaders talking, and Boris Johnson, who came last、uh, in, the, in terms of the final segment, was interrupted many times more than anyone else. He was heckled many times, and he actually, I'm surprised how well he actually did without being biased,、uh, because actually, in terms of the performance, I think Jeremy Corbyn survived. He didn't mess up.、Um, Nicola Sturgeon was really good.、Uh, she's a pro.、Uh, Joe Swinson, absolutely. Amateurish and terrible, weak and feeble,、uh, but Boris Johnson did really well, and even I wasn't expecting him to survive that crowd. That crowd was scary. Again, if you haven't seen it, make sure you watch it on BBC iPlayer. But Kate Hoey, the former Labour MP,、uh, says that.、Uh, am I correct in thinking that Fiona Bruce is interrupting Boris Johnson much more than any of the others, and in a slightly more aggressive way? And actually, we counted. How many times each leader was、uh, interrupted? Jeremy Corbyn eleven times, Nicola Sturgeon fifteen times, Joe Swinson seventeen times, and Boris Johnson forty-five times. Really? Now the difference is huge.、Um, but as we said, the, the BBC Question Time audience are not representative of the of the British public. There were a number of polls that came out. Obviously, different results. But、well, one specific poll、uh, showed something very different. Uh, the, uh, the total of fifty percent of people believe that the Conservative leader stole the show, with less than a quarter of、uh, readers, twenty-three th- percent people, convinced that Jeremy Corbyn won. Of the twenty-two thousand three hundred sixty-eight people who voted in the poll, eleven thousand three hundred seven believe Boris Johnson won, versus just four thousand eight hundred sixteen people who voted for Mr. Corbyn. Of the four candidates, Joe Swinson seemed the least popular, with just eight percent. One thousand seven hundred seventy-six people believe that she won the debate. I mean, it's still quite worrying that over a thousand people thought that Joe Swinson did a good job, but you never know.、Uh, but we also also talked about fact checkers uh, recently uh, on this channel, and especially、uh, with what the Conservative Party did the other day with a funny stunt on Twitter, changing the name of their account to Fact Check UK as a joke, and that backfired.、Uh, the fact checkers. Are also not impartial because last night we had a number of fact checkers, including BBC,、uh, who targeted、uh, every comment that Boris Johnson made. But when it came to other leaders, they, you know, they just picked one or two things that they said, and they were quite harmless. One audience member said that Harold Wilson during the seventies, as Prime Minister, was neutral in the in the previous referendum of、uh, Europe, but in reality. He was pro Remain, so the fact check said, "Oh, that's not right." Harold Wilson was pro Remain, so ooh, well done.、Uh, but there was one fact check, so the, we have to fact check the fact checkers these days.、Uh, but there, had, there was one specific one that actually was good, so thank God for that.、Uh, Jeremy Corbyn claimed th- that the, the biggest businesses, big corporations, will be asked to pay a little bit more in corporation tax, but it will be lower than in 2010. And indeed, lower than the average for most industrial countries, which is untrue because so the, we always talk about this. It's called corporation tax, but it's actually business tax because it applies to businesses in general. Labour's manifesto states that it plans to increase corporation tax, which is、uh, tax companies pay on profits made in the UK, from 19% to 26% over three years. 
in 2010 and 2011, corporation tax stood at 28% on the question of whether it will be lower than the average uh, for most industrial countries. If you look at the uh, G20 list of the biggest economies in 2018 and 2019, a rate of 26% would be lower than 9 uh, or, and higher than 13 other countries. Some of these rates could change though over the next three years, but actually in reality it is it will be quite high and we will be higher than Russia and Saudi Arabia and Turkey and Italy for God's sake. Uh, so this is going to be quite embarrassing and it's not going to be just targeting big business, it's targeting all business and they're lying to you when they say oh we're just going after the top, the rich, the McDonald's, the Amazons. No, not in reality. Uh, so that's uh, what we're dealing with. We're gonna be have to. We're gonna have to fact check the fact checkers a lot during this election. So, uh, as you know, we uh, release videos every day. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click on the bell next to it so you get notified. We're getting close to ninety thousand subscribers. So make sure that you support this channel to make sure we get to the uh, that level. Uh, we also have the merchandise and um, the new T-shirts. If you haven't seen, we got the. Uh, all I want for Christmas is Brexit t-shirts and we also have the new ones get Brexit done uh, make Britain independent again you can find them and the uh, various uh, other designs and t-shirts the link is in the description as always and if you want to follow me on social media Twitter Instagram you could find them as always down here somewhere and uh, I'm Maya Tusi and I'll see you tomorrow with a new video